wanted to talk to you guys today about yeast. So yeast overgrowth refers to gut dysbiosis when the good bacteria in the gut is depleted, allowing for a fungus known as Candida albicans to multiply and grow in its place. Candida colonize and form a thick resistant biofilm in the lining of the gut, which in turn also causes inflammation. Current research shows a strong link between um, the gut and the brain health and has proven that when inflammation is present in the gut, it is also most likely present in the brain. So by improving the gut health and minimizing yeast overgrowth, you could expect your child to make all around progress and just feel better. Um, so why does yeast overgrow in the first place? Well, there's a few reasons why this happens. Um, so for starters, if the mother has yeast overgrowth during pregnancy, candida albicans can pass through the placenta and um, the baby can be exposed to those um, in utero and acquire them that way. Um, children on the spectrum also have a higher probability of needing and taking um, antibiotics during infancy and their toddler years. Taking antibiotics not only kills the bad bacteria, but also kills all the beneficial bacteria in the gut, which then also allows for yeast to overgrow. Um, and then diets that are high in carbs and sugar also create an environment where yeast can thrive as their main source of food is sugar. Um, uh, heavy metals, so heavy metals not only compromise gut health, but they also um, cause the body to create yeast as a defense mechanism in an, an attempt to protect itself. So yeast is surprisingly a metal binder. So when metals are present in the blood, the body will produce candida to bind to the metals to pull it out of the blood as quickly as possible. So as long as heavy metals are an issue in the body, yeast will be present. This is why it is known that when you chelate, yeast will um, flare and get stirred up as you are constantly moving metals from those stored reservoirs into the blood to be excreted the body will be continuously creating yeast throughout the process um, to try and protect itself so yeast can be extremely hard to identify as the symptoms can also mimic um, several other ailments so some of the signs that you can um look for as early as infancy are things like thrush in the mouth, cradle cap, chronic diaper rashes that don't subside with diaper cream, frequent ear infections, um, some of the symptoms that you could expect to see in a toddler or an older child could be things like stimming, tippy toe walking, hand flapping, lack of focus and eye contact, brain fog, loose bowels, bloating, middle of the night waking, acting silly or goofy. Um, yeast also creates and releases a form of alcohol that can also make the child appear almost drunk or intoxicated and have uncontrollable fits of laughter and giggling. Um, there are several ways to reduce and eliminate yeast overgrowth, but it normally takes a multifaceted approach in addressing the yeast from several different angles to be successful. So um, some of the things that you could um, do to combat yeast are taking antifungals and there are several natural or herbal based antifungals. Um, some of these include things like grapefruit seed extract, oil of oregano, potearco, caprylic acid, cat's claw, and there's even complex formulas such as um, biocidin that contain multiple antifungals. Um, when natural antifungals are not efficient, sometimes a prescription might be necessary. Some of the most common ones I see used are nystatin or diflucan. Um, a natural antifungal should always be tried first though as the risk of resistance is much lower. Resistance is more likely um, to take place with synthesized prescription antifungal medications, unlike with the broad spectrum activity seen in the natural antifungal products. So um, enzymes are also additionally helpful when added because they help disrupt and break down the biofilm matrix. Some popular ones are Candex, Enzymeticas, Candidase, 
or Kirkman's Biofilm Defense. Supplementing with vitamin B7, also known as biotin, can also slow or stop the vicious cycle of yeast turning into a fungal overgrowth and also aids the body in being able to efficiently fight candida. Taking a multi-strain probiotic is also recommended. Um, by overcrowding the gut with beneficial bacteria, it eliminates the opportunity for yeast to multiply and grow in its place as yeast is an opportunist. So, um, lastly, making some dietary changes. So reducing and eliminating carbs and sugar will starve the yeast. There is an anti-candida diet that you can look into that is specific in addressing yeast overgrowth. Um, there are also several foods that are natural antifungals that you can incorporate into your child's diet that are beneficial. So some of these include things like coconut oil, garlic, cinnamon, cloves, apple cider vinegar, and fermented foods, just to name a few. Um, when aggressively treating yeast, another thing to consider is Herx's reaction. So um, a Herx's reaction refers to the physiological response that a person has to yeast die-off. Um, candida hosts nearly 80 different toxins that are released back into the body when they um, are killed. So a Herx reaction could resemble a temporary regression um, and or present itself externally in the form of a rash. So that is the information I wanted to share with you guys regarding um, yeast. Um, what candida overgrowth is. If you guys are interested in joining my Facebook group, um, you can search for it on Facebook. The name of the group is um, Autism Biomedical Treatments and Chelation for Kids. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.